Thank you. Um, Admiral, uh, we've had um, some confusion on when something is classified and when it is not. Is there some process that delineates when something is classified and when it is not classified? Uh, we've had uh, testimony here, things have classified, and then you read it in the paper. Does it come declassified just because you said it, or is there some process to declassify? No, there is a process, but it's uh, ultimately a judgment call. Well, it's a judgment call, but I mean, is there some, do we know, when does it become declassified? Is that when you just decide on the spot to blurt it out to a reporter? N no, not at all. Is there some process? There is a process, but as I say, it's it's uh, ultimately a responsibility of the president to. But decide there is a, there is a process, so we know when something was declassified. The moment of time it was declassified, and this, is there some record of that? Um, not specifically um, that that I'm aware of. I'm sure it can be um, recovered in some way if there's a specific concern or question. You said that um, the old law prevented you from getting intelligence and mentioned specifically conversations between al-Qaeda from overseas talking to people within the United States. And now that it, now it is legal to intercept those uh, communications, if it is legal now, why couldn't you have intercepted those conversations with a FISA warrant, a FISA warrant obtained before or after the fact if you're in a hurry? Um, the issue becomes volume and ability to keep pace. Um, we could have um, targeted communications of al-Qaeda except when it touches wire in the United States. That was the, the technical issue. Wait, we well, you could into. get a warrant to get that. You just couldn't do it without a warrant. It, yes, sir, but what you just now said is now you're requiring us to have a warrant for a foreign target in a foreign country. So the issue is the, 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 um, there are lots of targets, and so the, it would it, the, but the you are community not, couldn't keep up. You are not... So you just say it's a paperwork problem. It's not a prohibition. No, of it's law. a practical problem. But you can get that information. You could get that information. No, no sir, I, I cannot. But think about foreign intelligence. I mean, there, there are thousands, potentially millions, of, of potential targets of interest. So the, the process just couldn't turn fast enough to if we were required and to get a warrant. And if you felt you needed some information, even the after the fact warrant would not solve that problem. Would not, no, sir. And, and if I could add, you would also, in that se sense, be required, you would not just make the showing that it's a valid foreign intelligence target that we do in our foreign intelligence collection. Under FISA, you would have to be making a probable cause showing concerning that foreign person overseas. So it is not the case that in every situation where we had a valid foreign intelligence target, we would make a probable cause showing to the FISA court. It is not the case that in any sense we could do that for every valid foreign intelligence target. So anybody overseas. overseas, you don't have to make any ascertainment about who they are. Any call into the United States, you can listen to. Foreign, yes, sir. If it's a foreign, if it's a legitimate foreign intelligence target. I mean, they're, well, they're well, practical wait a minute, wait a minute. What, You just said you didn't, it's not a target. It's just somebody. Uh, it, it, well, it, let's insert some practicality here. Uh, if you if you practically target somebody as a terrorist overseas, there's no problem. There's no legal impediment for you getting a warrant to who they're calling. But now under the new act, that's correct. Under no, the old under, act, under, it was. Under the old act, you could get a warrant. I could get a warrant. That's correct. Okay. Uh, and now, the issue was I was required okay, to get a warrant. Okay. Just a problem. little more paperwork. Okay. Now. There's uh, well, a, I wouldn't characterize it a little more paperwork. There's a word. The, the section 105B authorizes you to get. Um, Foreign, intelli foreign intelligence information concerning. Now, the word in the section 105A is directed at a person. In 105B, it's concerning persons believed to be outside the United States. That's a different word, and it, why wouldn't we conclude that it, you're supposed to have a different meaning, that the subject matter of the conversation is concerning a person to be outside of the United States? Sir, that is complex. I'm going to ask counsel to respond. There are, there are reasons for the choice of words. And from my perspective, we want to be effective. So if there's a better word, I'd be happy to consider it. But let me ask counsel to, to uh, respond to, the, to your specific question. In terms of the actual drafting, sort of whose idea it was and exactly what rationale there was for putting that in there, I, I can't speak to that myself. But I think that when you, you look at it, you realize that um, given the circumstances under which this uh, this act was drafted, it was intended to allow us to fill an intelligence gap. Well, well, let me let me just. I'm, I'm running out of time. Okay. Acquisition of foreign intelligence information concerning persons reasonably believed to be outside of the United States. 
Now, the gentleman from um, California went to great lengths to say you have to have it in contact with all these other laws. Unfortunately, Section 105B starts out with the phrase, notwithstanding any other law. Yeah, but this is part now of you part. say you're authorized, but this is part of you authorize the acquisition of foreign intelligence information concerning persons reasonably believed to be outside the United States. Now, why couldn't we conclude somebody calling two people in the United States talking to each other about Tony Blair um, concerning a person he's believed to be outside the United States? Why shouldn't you, we conclude that you're trying to get into that conversation well, well, with, back, without a warrant? Well, back to the point that uh, Congressman Munger made, which is that the rest of FISA, the rest of the definition well, not, of FISA. Now, uh, notwithstanding any other law starts off that section. The, it, it, would would the gentleman to, yield on that point? Without all that. Would, would the gentleman yield on that point? How do you? If it said notwithstanding any other section of this law, I think your point would be valid. It says notwithstanding any other law, provision of law. It still is within the context of FISA. Well, notwithstanding any other law, um, authorized acquisition of foreign intelligence information concerning. Now, these words mean something, and you pointed out that they're di you in intentionally chose different words. It's not directed at a person reasonably believed to be outside, located outside the United States. It's concerning persons reasonably believed to be outside the United States. Now, yeah. would, that, would that include, say, um, a conversation? Suppose you have a war protester in Iraq calling a war protest in the United States. That's foreign intelligence, isn't it? Uh, well, um, is that foreign intelligence? If it's a war, no. we're prohibited from doing anything solely on the basis of activities prohibited by the First Amendment. That's a, that's a bedrock principle of the intelligence community operations. Um, Where, is war that in Where is that in here? Uh, that has been a bedrock principle of the intelligence community. That's in Executive Order 12333. That is in the National Security Act. Um, that's a bedrock principle that's part of every person's training in the intelligence community. Um, a war protester exercising their First Amendment rights is not a, a, a valid foreign intelligence target. And if I may answer the other hypothetical involving the notwithstanding any other uh, law, if you read uh, the conditions under which certifications may be made within that section, we have to certify that the acquisition does not constitute electronic surveillance. Electronic surveillance, as defined in the Act, remains the same. If the sender and intended recipient are both within the United States, we are required to get a court order. That would remain electronic surveillance. That's the specific reason why, in this provision, it says uh, that, that they can only certify it when it says the acquisition does not constitute electronic surveillance. Does that include emails? Does that include emails? The, ac the acquisition does not include I don't think that it's, it's communications, foreign intelligence information. It cannot constitute electronic surveillance. Is, so if it's is domestic email, to domestic communication captured, it would, it would be included. Is, is an email included in uh, the exclusion? You need to make that more clear. That's not clear. Can you get an email, domestic to domestic, talking about someone outside of the United States? That, I believe that would constitute electronic surveillance. Require a warrant. And require a court order. Um, Gentleman's time it, has expired. May, may I just add one thing, Mr. Chairman, just to, to follow on to your question about the exercise of First Amendment rights. Uh, in, in FISA, actually, Section 1805, it says the target of the electronic surveillance, we have to show the target of electronic surveillance is a foreign power, provided that no U.S. person may be considered a foreign power or an agent of foreign power solely upon the basis of activities protected by the First Amendment of the, the Constitution of the United States. But you're not, you don't, don't have to be a foreign power because you just have to be outside of the United States. Yes, I, you were asking about where that provision is. That's actually in the original FISA when it talks about if our showing of somebody being a foreign power. That, well, that you're not getting a warrant under FISA. You're just designating somebody out of the country calling in. And the question is whether you can pick up some foreign intelligence. Yes, well, and that's, that goes to what Mr. Powell said about the, uh, the guidance and the various policies with the intelligence community. I was saying that that's actually been codified in FISA as well. And I think it's something that, that permeates all our activities. In other words, it could be clearer.